The media response on this, of course, has been egregious, as I have mentioned. You saw the NBC response. Don Lemon, whose show I enjoy appearing on, uh, he said that we should stop with the thoughts and prayers. No more thoughts and prayers. And, and this transitions us into another topic about thought and prayer that I want to discuss uh, in just a second. Here's, here's Lemon on thoughts and prayers. This is not what thoughts and prayers are designed to do, okay? Prayer is not always designed to get you what you want, okay? If people prayed and they got what they want, God would be a gumball machine. That's not what religious people believe. You know, I, I assume that Don prays. I mean, he says he does, but you know, I'm not sure what he expects from God. Again, the problem of theodicy has been one that religion has taken up time and time again. When it comes to human evil, the idea here is that human beings have free will, and we can pray that those human beings don't use that free will in the worst possible ways. We can pray that God protects us, but God sometimes says no, right? God sometimes says no. And this is one of the, the tragedies of human life is we don't understand God's plan. But let me talk for a minute about what prayer actually does. So I'm gonna be completely sincere here. I have a difficult time praying. I pray three times a day. It's not something that I particularly enjoy doing because uh, in, in Judaism, prayer can be relatively formulaic. When I say relatively, I mean very formulaic. You say the same prayer three times a day. The idea is that it's supposed to be almost like a mantra. It's supposed to provide you a leaping off point to actually think about God and think about your relationship with him. But prayer can be very difficult unless you're actually just sitting there concentrating on what the purpose of prayer is. So I've really done a lot of thinking myself for myself about what I think prayer does, particularly prayer in the aftermath of tragedy. I think that prayer does really three things. I think prayer does three things. First, it reminds us that while it is our job to strive to prevent evil from succeeding each day, God's plan is not ours, right? Half of prayer is about recognizing that your plan is not God's. You are not God, right? The, the point of prayer is for you to say to God, I understand that you are the creator of the universe and you are beyond my logic. I don't understand. I mean, the, the ineffability of God is a sacred notion in virtually all major religions. The idea that you are not in control of the universe and the suggestion that you can prevent all bad things from happening with prayer, that's not what prayer is for. That's why Religious people get upset when they hear things like what Don Lemon is saying because he's misconstruing what prayer is for. No one who believes in prayer believes that prayer is going to prevent a Justice Department oversight. No one believes that that's what prayer is designed to do. One of the things prayer is designed to do is remind us not to be utopian, not to believe that we can stop every tragedy from happening, not to believe that there's any power in the universe that is capable of implementing our will specifically and making it the rule for everyone. That's not, prayer is designed to do the reverse. It's designed to remind us not to be utopians in, in what Karl Popper would call a, a sort of utopian negative model, right? That, that would help us run roughshod over the rights of other people. Because remember, Half of what Don Lemon is saying here about, you know, we, we need to change the law would wreck it. Every, every law is an imposition on somebody. So who are you, whose rights are you imposing on? Prayer reminds us that you don't actually get to do that all the time, right? That utopia is not something that you can aim for while violating the rights of others because God in the end is the actual judge, right? When somebody dies, Jews say, Baruch Dayan Emet, right? Baruch Dayan Emet. So that's, that's what Jews say. What that means is blessed is the true judge, meaning that I don't get to make the call as to whether something that just happened is according to God's plan. Only God can make that call. And I may not understand it and I can mourn it. I mean, we cry at funerals. Right? We're not crying because we question God's justice. We're crying because it's sad, right? We may not, we may not understand. In the same way that, that children cry when their parents are trying to implement justice and the kids don't understand. We don't understand. There's no way for us to understand. That's what faith is. Okay, prayer also helps us see the value in other human beings and convey that we understand that value to other human beings. You know, where atheists, where, where irreligious people see prayer as nothing but empty verbiage, it doesn't accomplish anything. How many people have been bettered by communities that pray, right? Prayer takes place in communal settings, not just individual prayer. I think that individual prayer is valuable, but Judaism believes, and I believe so does Christianity, that communal prayer is more valuable than individual prayer. That individual prayer is useful, but you're supposed to get together in a community because the idea is that that community draws other people in. How many bad people, how many would-be shooters have been converted by going to places like churches and praying with others. A lot. How many evil people have been drawn into the nexus of a community that prays and sees the value of other individuals before God? That has prevented bad action. You never see it. You never see it because you only see the bad stuff. Remember with, uh, with, that, with the Charleston, South Carolina shooter, uh, there, was, there was a report that came out shortly afterward, I'll have to look it up, uh, where this, this piece of garbage white supremacist who murdered a bunch of people in the church, he said he had trouble pulling the trigger because when he went in there, there were all of these black people who were really nice to him and were praying with him. Right? He was evil enough that he was able to overcome that drop. There are a lot of people who aren't. There are a lot of people who are turned away from dark paths by communities that pray together and value one another. Prayer is valuable in a communal setting. Okay, but neither of these things has to do with what the left believes. The left believes the only thing that is actually impactful in, in the world is not our communities releasing, reaching out to each other, those soft kind of touches. That stuff doesn't work. 
right? They don't believe that, that us accepting a godly justice is a worthwhile thing. We should fight against that, right? We should, we should be like Ahab fighting against God, trying to stab through the pasteboard mask of Moby Dick. That's what we should be doing every day. And there's something to the notion of struggling with God. I mean, Judaism believes that, that you know, that struggle is, is ongoing, but the idea in the end is that God is right and you're wrong, right? But in any case, that does not, that's not an excuse for inaction when action is called for. But here is the problem, right? Prayer, obviously, is supposed to motivate you to go out and do better things. It's motivate you to do better. It's supposed to be fuel in your gas tank. What the left assumes is that if I disagree with the direction you're steering the car, I don't have fuel in the gas tank. That prayer didn't put fuel in my gas tank. Prayer was useless because I don't agree that you ought to be aiming the car at gun control. Well, I don't believe you should be aiming the car at gun control because I don't think that the additional laws that you've been proposing are useful. By the way, I have said when I think an additional law might be useful or at least called for after Las Vegas. I said that I would, I would not vote against a law that prevented the, the, the sale of bump stocks. And so it's not like I'm against ever. I'm in favor of, of better enforcement against uh, people who have been mentally ill and, and have been in mental hospitals owning weapons. Right? Cruz pointed out, and he's right, that, that, that there were like 40,000 people who illegally owned guns in the United States, and 44 of them were prosecuted. And there was 40,000 people who tried to illegally buy guns, and Obama prosecuted 40 of them. And we need to implement the laws that we already have on the books. We don't need new laws. But that doesn't mean that my prayers are ineffective. It means that I'm not praying for the same thing that you are, or the action to which I have devoted myself is not the action you choose. But your suggestion that my prayer is not accepted by you, I'm not praying to you, and I don't care what you think of my prayer. When I pray, I'm talking to God, not to you, because you're not God and neither is God.